In this, of course, After Effects video, we're gonna create a really cool day to night cycle that can loop on forever right here for your motion graphics. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel, Sunduck Film. Hope you're doing excellent today. This video might seem very simple, uh, but there's a lot of really cool techniques that go into creating a day to night cycle that just goes on forever. Uh, so we're gonna jump in this tutorial. We're gonna take a look at several really cool steps to pulling this off. And remember, you can download our project files. That link will be below and let's jump in. Alrighty, here we are in After Effects. And if I scroll through our scene, you'll notice that this entire scene is gonna be looping. And it's super simple to set this up with just a couple of expressions. So here we are in our tutorial composition. I don't have any animation here. And this scene was set up from Adobe Illustrator. If you're interested in the workflow between Illustrator and After Effects, I'll link a tutorial in the description below if you wanna do that type of animation. But in this video, we're specifically talking about a day to night cycle. All right, in our first step, we're gonna create this sky background here to change from day to night. So what we'll do is go to layer, new solid, call it sky, click OK. Go to effect, generate, and we're gonna grab fill. We'll change our color to a daytime blue color and click OK. And we'll bring this layer below everything else, of course, because it's the sky. So what we're gonna do is right at two seconds in our timeline, we'll add a keyframe for color, and we'll hit U to bring up the keyframes here. And then what we'll do is go right here to three seconds, and we'll change our color to a nighttime, very dark blue color like this, and that's fine. And then we'll go to say two seconds and 12 frames, and we can change our color to a nice warm sunset color, because we want to have that nice transition over from blue sunset to dark. Then what we're gonna do is we'll take our keyframes, we'll copy them, we'll have our nighttime up for say two seconds, because we want it to match the same length of the daytime, and we'll go to five seconds in our timeline, and we'll paste those keyframes in there that we just copied. Right click on them, go to keyframe assistance, and click on time reverse keyframes. So what we would like to do is have this loop on forever. So we'll go to eight seconds in the timeline, and we'll just simply add a keyframe. And then all we'll do is alt click the stopwatch for color, type in a loop out with a capital O, open close parenthesis, just like this. And now you'll notice that we'll go from daytime to dark, and it'll just keep going on forever. All right, so we need to make this transition from day to night a little bit more realistic for our main scene here. So what we're gonna do for our that main object, we'll go to effect color correction, we'll grab tint, and we'll change both of these colors to a nice, you know, dark blue color for a nighttime sort of low light look. Perfect. And then right at two seconds, what we'll do is we'll add a keyframe for amount of tint. We'll set this down to 0%. Go to three seconds, because we're matching up that transition right there perfectly. We'll set that amount to tint up to 60%. And then we'll go to say five seconds and then we'll copy these keyframes like before. We'll copy them, paste them, right click, go to keyframe assistance and time reverse keyframes. Perfect. Then go right to eight seconds and add that keyframe in there, of course. And then we'll do the same exact thing. Copy the loop out expression, all click stopwatch and paste the loop out expression uh, for amount of tint. So now we have our scene transitioning from a lighting perspective from day to night. And before we move on to our next technique, if you're looking to create awesome motion graphics that stand out within a click of a button, check out our 300 plus editors motion pack for After Effects and also Premiere Pro. With our easy to use Atomex extension, all you have to do is find a graphic that you like and hit apply. Once it's on the timeline, you can easily customize colors and other parameters to fit your needs. You can check out the 300 plus editors motion pack and all the other packs we have off our website on sunduckfilm.com. So if you're looking to save time and produce awesome work, you can check out those links in the description below. All right, so next up we have to create the sun and of course the moon. So to create the sun and the moon, what we'll do is grab the lips tool right here and we can set our fill color to a nice warm sun color. And all we're gonna do is draw out a small circle, hold down shift here to draw out a perfect circle. And that's cool. And then what we're gonna do is we'll take our lips one here and we can go to edit, duplicate. We'll go into lips two and we can go to that transform lips two and scale this bottom version up and just bring down the opacity. And of course we can change the color to something else to kind of variate this by touch. And then we can take our lips two again, duplicate it. And this time around we'll scale up that duplicate and lower the opacity even more. All right, perfect. And we can bring a sun layer underneath our main objects here. And now we have a sun here. Now we just got to animate this in a sort of circular motion. So what we'll do is we'll grab the ellipse tool here and make sure our sun layer is selected. And we'll come here to the top where it says tools create mask. Just select that so we can create a mask. And from the center of our composition, what we'll do is click, hold down control on our keyboard as we create this oval sort of mask. And I don't want it to be a perfect circle. 
just want this to have an oval mask like this, and that's great. And then we'll hit MR keyboard to bring out that mask. We'll set the mask path to none, so we can see through this. We'll select mask path, and I'm gonna grab this left point right here, and I'm gonna right click on it, go to mask and shape, and click on set the first vertex. Now I'm gonna copy the mask path, and I'll hit P on my keyboard for position, and I'll select position and paste what I just copied in there. And now we're gonna have this path in here. And one thing we're gonna need to do, cause you'll see the sun goes down that way. I don't really want that. I can right click my keyframes, keyframe assistance, and of course time reverse keyframes. So now we'll have this perfect. All right, so the time to sell perfectly with our sky changing colors, we're gonna do some cheating here. Uh, with the keyframe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my last keyframe here and this will allow us to drag out the keyframes all the way across our timeline. And you see we can kind of time this out to where the sun's behind the scene right when it gets dark. So that's the goal of what we want to accomplish. So we'll set this to say the last keyframe to five seconds. And the reason why we're gonna achieve these keyframes is because we don't have like the perfect landscape here uh, to where we can just keep this looping. We have to hide the sun for a little bit. So what we'll do is grab our keyframes, right click them and uncheck rove across time. So now we'll have control over the keyframes. And all we're gonna do is we'll stretch out these keyframes. So while it's underneath our landscape here, it'll slowly move, but it won't move fast enough to where it will come out uh, when it's still dark. All right, so now that this is timed up perfectly, we just gotta hide the sun under our scenes. So what I'm gonna do is hit Shift S to bring up scale out of keyframe for scale. And I'll move forward by a little bit here. And we'll set our scale down to 0%, so this will allow it to be hidden underneath our background. And that's perfect. And then we'll move forward here. And right when it's about to reemerge, we'll add a keyframe for scale. And we'll move forward. And we'll set that back up to 100%. And to finish out the scale, we'll go to say eight seconds. We'll add a keyframe for scale. And now we can all click the stopwatch for position, do loop out, just like that. We'll copy it and then we'll paste it to the scale. So now we'll have the scene where the sun goes underneath the horizon, it comes back out and it'll keep doing that forever. All right, so next up, of course, we have to create the moon here. So this is very easy to do. We're just gonna take our sun layer, we'll duplicate it, we'll call it moon. And we'll just hit U on keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And all we're gonna do is bring this layer forward to where it's on the opposite side of our, you know, composition here. And we'll change our fill color to white. Click OK. You know, and this should be, you know, perfectly timed out. You're just gonna have to find that right time by moving that moon layer in your timeline to the right time. All right, another thing you might be interested in is creating some details around your sun and moon. So I went ahead and actually custom made my moon just a little bit more, uh, but uh, what you can do to add some stars or clouds, super simple. We'll grab the ellipse tool here and we'll do the moon first. So we'll add some stars around our moon. You know, hold down shift on keyboard to draw out these smaller circles. And when you're happy with your stars, all you have to do is take your pick whip and parent it to your moon layer. So now we should have something like this where the stars follow the moon and that's great. So now you can do the same thing with the sun. So we create some clouds, it's really easy. As before, we'll just draw out some, you know, random circles here. And all we're gonna do is kind of group these together to create a cloud. And there's another cloud. You know, these are by far not perfect, but this is a really quick way of doing it. And then as before, we'll take our pick whip, parent it to the sun layer and this should follow and scale down and make sure that the cloud layer is underneath uh, you know, your main object so it can go hide. So boom, that's how you can quickly add some objects to your scene. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about here is animating something within your scene. So we have fire here. We only wanna have this on at the night cycle. Uh, so we have our fire layer separated here in our scene. Um, and all we're gonna do to do this, we'll hit T on keyboard for opacity. We'll come into our sky layer and all we're gonna do is kind of time this up perfectly. So when it's dark, we want this to fire to be on. So we'll set that 100% uh, and we'll make sure the frame before it's set to 0% so it's not turned on during the daytime. And then we'll go ahead and copy our keyframes. We'll go ahead and paste those in there, right click, go to keyframe assistance and time reverse keyframes and perfect. And obviously we're gonna wanna add that extended keyframe out here so we know it's gonna be turned off and then all click stopwatch and do the loop out. So now you see we have a fire turned off and then turns on at night and then turns off during the day. I'll do a quick little animation tip here because everyone's gonna be a little bit different so I don't wanna spend too much time on this. Uh, but what I can do to animate this simply is hit S on my keyboard for scale. And what I'll do is add a keyframe for this. And then what I'm gonna do is move forward by one frame and I'll add a negative symbol in front of my scale. And then I'll do loop out here, I'll click stopwatch and I'll type out loop out. Open, close parenthesis. 
So now this will kind of just be flickering there every single frame as if it's being, you know, on fire. And if you've been following Sorrel, you should have this night to day cycle like this for your, you know, explainer vector video sort of cartoon graphics. So now you can bring the light and the darkness to your motion graphics. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, be sure to smash the subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here. You can also hit us up on our Instagram. We got really cool content for After Effects and designers on there. And always, be creative.